Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Always Something Garage. Today we're going to be uh, working on some tooling for the old uh, garage. We're going to take a 72 inch work table that we've been using, you know, all of our different projects and um, stuff we need to work on, and we're going to be kind of uh, adding on to it with a custom built um, sheet metal bender. So, the whole purpose of this video is show you guys the different materials needed to the different tools that are being used to create this. So, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys like the video and also subscribe to the channel. See ya. Hey, how you guys doing today? Well, we got another project we're going to work on today in uh, Always Something Garage, but we're going to make a uh, sheet metal break. Um, you know, you guys saw that first video of the Dakota, the inner rockers, uh, rusted out. Uh, of course, we can buy outer rockers in, in the different parts, but they don't make an inner rocker. So. I need to bend some uh, some shapes there. Always wanted a, a sheet metal break, but of course, you know, uh, money and even space requirements to have one of those. But today we're going to make one. Um, I'm going to use my uh, my six foot workbench, and I'm going to mount it to the bench. It'll be removable, so then I can stand it up in a corner. But uh, so I'm going to use some three by three by three eighths uh, carbon steel angle. I got some uh, 3 8 by 6 flat bar. Uh, that's what I'll use for the mount. Um, a couple round bar and some in different things. But uh, a lot of it is just stuff I've had in the shop or, or I bought a couple of the pieces of angle that uh, wanted to be a little stronger. Um, so first thing we're going to do is I need to make the hinges. Uh, I didn't find any hinges that I really liked and, and I, I like making things kind of overkill. Uh, especially if I'm going to try to do uh, 18 gauge over uh, 66 inches is pretty much the max I'm going to get out of my table. Uh, we'll see how that works out. But so I got some uh, one inch uh, 188 wall tubing, uh, and I got a five eighths well, old stainless bolt that I had. And I got two of them, and then I'm going to use this as the pin. I'm going to cut the threads off. Uh, I'm going to have to. Uh, cut these down. I'm going to make my hinge into four pieces. So it'll be a, a barrel hinge and I'll uh, probably have to clearance these out with a 5 h drill bit. Um, it's close but not enough. And uh, we'll go from there and, and see how it turns out. Alright, I got a 3 8 by 6 flat bar up. I'm going to use this as my mount that I'm going to actually mount to the table. Um, I'm going to use a plasma cutter, um, cut it up, grind it flat. I'm going to have to drill some holes, probably countersink them so that I make the flat surface. We got our hinges made and we marked out our plate, half the uh, diameter of our hinge. We'll cut that out, we'll get that side on this uh, flat plate welded on there. As you can see, the hinge is going to be a pretty nice hinge there. We'll get two barrels per each side of the hinge. Notched out the plate for the hinge. Now we need to notch out the angle for the hinge. That'll be the other side of the hinge. So we'll cut this out, um, get those together, and get them tacked together. Angle here. We have to take this little wall and go on this angle. And cut 
cut it off here so when we do go to bend sheet metal when it articulates back this doesn't hit the, the back side of the mechanism. surfaces prepped. Now we are ready to uh, tack on that hinge. On your situation at your house, garage, or wherever you're working at, um, but this uh, this next step is the mounting um, part. As in, uh, we are now drilling into the bottom plate, which does and will uh, mount to our work table. Um, so this part kind of changes on different scenarios of what you guys have at your own shop. brackets were just made up put a big uh, one inch hole I'm going to use a 7 8 uh, bolt I had laying around so I had to cut these one inch uh, out of a hole saw the hole saw was dull but these are going to go on here get these welded up I'll get some bolts in here and we're getting close
bolts welded on there. Now I'm going to put a, a backbone or a truss on the back of that top die. I got it laid out on the table here, probably hard to see. See the black lines. What I'm going to do is take this half inch round bar, I'm going to bend it and make a, uh, a truss on the back side of that die. It's going to be adjustable so we can tighten down on it. Uh, it's, I know there's a lot of stress on the center of that angle so hopefully that will eliminate it. Well. The uh, backbone on. I made mine angled back. I know a lot of guys go straight up and down. I wanted to be able to bend uh, the sheet over without running into the the backbone truss. Uh, hopefully it works. If not, I'll switch it. But crazy thing, I was fitting that up and. My brand new Lincoln 255 MIG machine just uh, stopped working. Um, wire feeder, the argon flow, everything is not uh, not working when you click the button. You can hear it clicking. So I don't know what's going on. So I had to jump on the uh, old 110 MIG just to tack it up. So we got it tacked up. Guess I'll bring out the TIG machine and uh, finish this up. But uh, yeah, it's coming out pretty good. Just got to put a uh, handle on it. Got the vice grips there now, but uh, I think she, I think she'll bend something. But it's 66 inches. Uh, I can do 66 inch wide. Um, looking really just to do 60, but that. Uh, the die face or, or throat, you would call it, I guess, is uh, 66 wide. So we'll see what it can do. Well, I made some handles, uh, 20 inches long. They're uh, three quarter inch uh, Schedule 40 pipe. MIG is having a hard time. We'll get that all welded back up with the TIG or the MIG if I get it fixed uh, tomorrow. Not bad. Alright guys, well we got the uh, brake finished up. We're going to give it the first try here, uh, see how she does. But uh, as you can see, it's a little different. Uh, we basically, I added some springs underneath here so that it'll release this top die. Uh, slotted the holes at the top so that we can give uh, the die a setback for the thickness of material. <coughs> I added this adjuster for that so that I can adjust the die in and out for the thickness of material. That's what I'm getting ready to do now. Um, some other things I added is I noticed that the bottom was bowing in the middle. I did give it a test run when I first got it together so I ended up putting some gussets in. It didn't really help much so then I ended up doing another truss like I did the top. I think that helps out a little bit better than uh, the way uh, those gussets were working. We haven't painted it. We still need to paint it. It's a little cold out here in the east right now, but we got it anchored to the table with our uh, flathead cap screw, socket cap screws in there. We got it four bolts, uh, I'm sorry, eight bolts, two, four, six, eight bolted down. And uh, 
we're gonna give it a try. So we got a piece cut right here, and it is 60, 63 inches total width. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this die here for the thickness of material. Make sure each side is adjusted in. that down. I think she's ready to go. This is 18 gauge. We set up all my springs. Also, I didn't show you, but I tapered the bottom of the angle. So instead of having a rounded edge, it actually has a taper uh, almost a bevel on it. I think I'm going to bevel it some more to get a sharp point that'll help us uh, when it comes time to get some sharp bends. But for what we need it for right off the bat, it's going to work fine. Lock it down. go folks hopefully it'll work looking pretty good don't want to overbend Do a little overbend, but good for a, uh, for a test. Nice corner. This is going to work good for the inner rockers on the Dakota. That's we're going to do that this weekend. Just got to do a little bit better. Radius in here looks a little fat, so it's still bowing in the center. So. You can see it's tight here. You can see this radius and you can see that it gets fatter here. So that means that it's bowing in the center. So either I tighten up my truss a little bit more uh, or maybe put some more stiffener in it. So it works. Well, that'll be the end of this video, guys. Um, make sure you guys like and subscribe. And um, down below in the description will be all the list of materials needed to uh, create this DIY custom sheet metal break. So.